it's so nice to see people from so many different parts of the world. I see people from Singapore and from South Africa, all across America, people from Europe, Australia, New Zealand, um, all across Europe. This is wonderful. Thank you for being with us. Um, let's start with some good news, and then we're going to move to some terrible news from Europe, and then we're going to look into our theme of this uh, evening. So the good news, first of all, minutes ago, minutes ago, we just uh, saw the tweet of the leader of the UAE, and basically what he said is that uh, the government, the council of the UAE, um, just ratified, just uh, ratified the agreement with the Israeli uh, government, with the, with the state of Israel, and is moving forward to implement uh, uh, the peace deal that was signed in Washington. Now, if that's not enough, ladies and gentlemen, just see these pictures from this morning, okay? I'm talking about pictures from this morning. Uh, this is Etihad flight that landed in Israel this morning on board this beautiful plane where it's the crew, and you can see they have Israeli flag and UAE flag, but there was also a delegation of uh, business people and politicians. We'll talk about them in a few minutes because something unpleasant happened to them while they were here. If you want to see more pictures, look, they're standing. We had a whole ceremony for them, the whole uh, sprinkling of water by the... Um, the firefighters uh, and the fire trucks uh, as the plane arrived it was a lovely thing to see. In fact, I don't think uh, the um, airport in Tel Aviv ever had a um, check in counter that had Etihad on it. This is um, right now in Tel Aviv. Etihad Airways has a counter, check in counter, and this is something interesting to see. By the way, Yesterday, in in Tel Aviv, at the airport, there was another checking counter that was pretty interesting. Take a look at this. Yesterday, there was an El Al flight from Tel Aviv to Bahrain. The LY973. 973, by the way, is the uh, uh, country code when you call to Bahrain. 972 is Israel. And um, there was another delegation from Israel that went to Bahrain. And seven economic deals, economic uh, um, uh, agreements were signed by them right there. The, the, the uh, delegation of Israel was actually mixed Israeli-American. It was actually uh, led by the U.S. Secretary of Treasury, Mnuchin. And uh, it was a wonderful thing, by the way, just so you know. And let me show you something very interesting. Very interesting. The Gulf uh, News, um, and I'm talking about... Um, a newspaper that is both written, printed, and electronic. Uh, the Gulf News used to report from Israel by ways of saying anything that happened in Jerusalem, look how they used to report. Anything in Jerusalem, take a look down the circle thing in red. They used to report that it is occupied Jerusalem. That's how Gulf News from the UAE used to write reports. Occupy Jerusalem. Well, guess what, ladies and gentlemen? Ev starting from yesterday, Gulf News, that's the printed newspaper. Take a look at the, um, at the error. Jerusalem. No more Occupy Jerusalem. What am I trying to say here? The used occupied only to help the Palestinian narrative. It's the same Jerusalem. It's the same capital of Israel. It's the same ancient capital of the Jewish people. Suddenly, occupied is taken away, and suddenly, when they have peace with Israel, it's no longer occupied. Wow, magic! Isn't that interesting? Now, another interesting thing that uh, happened, of course, is that um, again, uh, these uh, agreements were signed. Um, and uh, an interesting thing that happened, ladies and gentlemen is that the delegation that landed today, one of the first thing a Muslim wants to do when he comes to Jerusalem is to go to see the third holiest site in the world for Muslim. And what they, they did, they said, please take us to Jerusalem. We want to go to the Al-Aqsa Mosque. 
So they went to the Al-Aqsa Mosque. Uh, normally, when it's a VIP, uh, there's some police escort. They asked the Israeli police not to escort them because, look, we're Muslims. It's a Muslim holy site. We don't need the Israeli police there. So we, uh, we said, okay, no problem. Well, they walked without any escort. They walked into the Al-Aqsa Mosque and the Palestinian Muslim waqf, the, 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 the Palestinian Arabs in, on the Temple Mount, kicked them out. They literally, and I saw the video in Arabic, they said, out, out of here, you traitors. Look, ladies and gentlemen, UAE gave the Palestinians hundreds of millions of dollars. And now they're being kicked out with some bad language out of Temple Mount by the Palestinians. No wonder why the same delegation tweeted minutes after they got kicked out, thank God Jerusalem is under Israeli control. And listen to me, Muslim Arabs from the UAE tweeted, thank God Jerusalem is in Israeli control and not Palestinian, because otherwise <laughs> they would have been kicked out of the whole city by them. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the situation right now. The world, the Muslim world is now divided into two. Those who want to destroy Israel and they are holding the narrative of the Palestinians and those who understands the benefit of actually siding with Israel and they're actually um, not anymore buying the Palestinian narrative anymore. They don't believe the city is occupied. In fact, they sign a deal knowing that Israel will never, ever give Israel, uh, Jerusalem to the Palestinians. In fact, the, the, the deal of the century of Trump says that Jerusalem, the, the city of Jerusalem, will remain the undivided capital of Israel. And they're fine with that. It's quite amazing. And, and why am I saying that? Because, look, biblically, there is a portion of the Muslim world that will side with us, Sheba and Didan, the Gulf states, and biblically, there's another portion of the Muslim world that will come against us, which is Turkey and Libya, Sudan and Iran. Iran and Turkey, of course, the big ones, the Sunni and the, 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 the Shiite. So you understand now, the world is already divided according to Ezekiel's prophecy, but we're watching it as we speak right now. This is phenomenal. This is amazing. Nothing less than that. Now, let me take you to some. Uh, we're moving now. As we all are right now, we're moving to France. I'm going to show you some not so cool things to uh, terrible things. First of all, this is Paris in 1943. Lockdown, curfew. Nazis are there. People were not allowed to be in the streets. In fact, the last curfew Paris ever had was that year. And guess what? New curfew in Paris. Look at this. That's what Paris looked like from 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. because of the coronavirus. The city of lights, Paris, is under curfew. Ladies and gentlemen, there's more pictures that I can show you. Maybe you can see this street. Maybe you can see this street. I mean, empty streets in the city of lights. Because of the uh, coronavirus, they're moving ahead towards not just lock, look, lockdown in Israel. At least you could walk out uh, up until about a, a, a thousand yards away from your house. You could go to shop. You could, I mean, at any given time. This is a curfew. You're not even allowed to open the door of your flat or house and move out. You cannot walk in the street. That's it. Only police is in the street. Take a look at that. That's Paris. Of today, but let me tell you another thing that happened in a suburb of Paris just few days ago. This is uh, the map. The uh, Eragni is a northern Paris suburb, and in Eragni there is a high school, and in that high school there was a teacher, Mr. S Monsieur Samuel. Um, let me uh, be reminded of his. Uh, Names are, I want to be careful, Samuel Paty. And the teacher was teaching his uh, students of uh, what it is to have uh, 
freedom of speech. And he said, in a place that has freedom of speech, you can even have a Muhammad cartoons on a newspaper such as Charlie Hebdo. It is a controversial, according to the Muslims, um, 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 magazine. He showed the people the cartoon, cartoons of Muhammad in the Charlie Hebdo uh, magazine. Look what happened. Some of the students went back home, the Muslim students, they told their parents of what happened. One of the parents, this guy, immediately wrote the entire case and where it is, who is the teacher, and all of that in a, on, online, in basically saying, guys, somebody needs to do something about it. And guess what? An 18-year-old Chechen refugee. There's about 30,000 Chechens, Muslim Chechens from Soviet, from former Soviet Union, but they're still part of the Russian Federation. Chechnya. An 18-year-old Chechen who was heavily influenced by ISIS took the initiative. I'm sure he was given, you know, the command. He went to that school with a knife and with uh, some uh, air, air gun. He asked the students, where is that teacher? He found a teacher, stabbed him to death. Listen to this. Beheaded him, severed his head. And while he's holding the head of the teacher, he went online and, and just had a, like a pictures and Facebook Live for what? For the uh, ISIS supporting communities online. The police arrived. They shot him. He, he got killed, the 18-year-old. And several people were arrested. In fact, the French police is arresting many people right now. But this is France in 2020. That's what we have right now. And uh, make no mistake, the severed head of this uh, innocent teacher is going to echo in the minds of so many French. Um, and this is terrible, but that is what is going on right now in Paris. Um, you know, you can say whatever you want about Jesus. Nobody will care. Uh, say one word about Muhammad and your head is detached from your body. That's basically how it goes over there. And so, um, folks, this is basically what we see over there right now. I want to give you more, more news. Um, first of all, last night, about midnight, another strike in Syria between the city of El Mayadin and Al Bukamal. Um, several people got killed, among them a very senior member of the Iranian Revolutionary Guard. This was uh, most likely not an attack on a, on a weapon depot as much as a, a, an assassination of the leader of the, um, um, of the um, Iranian Revolutionary Guard over there. Turkey, ladies and gentlemen, Turkey continues to stir the pot all around. Let me show you something. Uh, Turkey purchased months ago, at the beginning of the year, the S-400 air defense system from Russia, something that made America super angry and actually made NATO super angry. Here it is, NATO, a member of NATO, is buying Russian weapon. I mean, they must be out of their mind. Um, Turkey uh, took time for Turkey to deploy it. Let me show you. On Sunday, yesterday, they launched it. Uh, excuse me, it was Friday, I think. They launched it. Here it is. They launched the interceptor. There you go. This is the interceptor that was launched. Why is it important? I wouldn't tell you if it wasn't important. It's important because the interceptor missed the target. <laughs> Russian most sophisticated air defense system failed. Turkey bought it for millions of dollars. Turkey proudly presented it, proudly tested it, and not so proudly failed. The Turks right now are not only in Iraq and in Libya and in Syria and in Azerbaijan, 
But apparently Turkey is stirring the pot elsewhere in Africa. They are convincing Chad, Nigeria, and Somalia to host training camps for terrorists so they can use them as uh, meat for the guns, basically, and transport them to wherever Turkey wants uh, to, uh, such as, as, you know, as every conflict area that they need some people to fight. They'll take them and airlift them to wherever they want. So we know that the Turkish um, generals and ministers of defense are traveling around. Latest stop was in Nigeria. Yesterday, we're watching them. Now comes a very interesting thing that happened yesterday. You probably heard about it. Yesterday, it was five years from the shameful signing of the Iran deal. And apparently, you may have not heard about it. Apparently, uh, that uh, deal, you, job, you probably don't know that, but that deal um, had a section in it that says that it's a 10 years deal. For 10 years, Iran should not enrich uranium. But within that deal, they said that within five years, Iran would be able to buy or sell weapons. In other words, embargo on weapon for five years only. Yesterday, those five years expired. Iran uh, was celebrating. America is isolated. We won a new dawn. And they started promoting everywhere the weapon that they produced that now they can sell. In fact, look. They even uh, did this. They said, look, this is the arsenal uh, or the inventory of, of rockets that we, we, we uh, develop. And they show you the range of the rockets. Say, what, what is it that you want to buy from us? A rocket for what? 100 kilometer, 200, 800, 1,000, 2,000, 2,500 kilometers? And we have it all. And look at the, look at the radius of all of them. They can actually hit Italy, certainly Greece, and other parts of Eastern Europe, not to mention parts of India and parts of um, West, uh, excuse me, um, Eastern and uh, Africa. Look at that. This is what they proudly present as if, guys, buy from us whatever you want. But make sure you understand the Iran deal was not only uh, a deal between the five superpowers, but it was also a deal that was later on voted in the Security Council of the United Nations. In other words, it's a Security Council resolution. Now, America said, look, according to the deal, if we see that Iran violates the deal, we can say that there is a way to what we call, they call it, um, they call it the uh, snap, I believe they, they, they call it, um, uh, yeah, it's called snapback, something like that. And, um, and this, is, um, this is the way that we can actually reimpose sanctions if needed. Reimpose sanctions on oil sales and reimpose the embargo on weapon. Look what happened. Now we know. Iran has violated a deal and is increasing its uranium enrichment in 50%. By the way, Britain and um, France already in the beginning of the year verified that Iran is in breach of the deal. And guess what? When it came to the Security Council, nobody stood by the United States. And the United States request to reimpose sanctions was actually denied. Listen to me. That means that this whole Iran deal is not worth the paper it was signed on. Why? Because the first time you see that they're trying to enact the sanctions because of violation, the nations, the other nations say, no, no, it's okay. That means that it was the smartest thing on, the, on behalf of the US to pull out of a deal that released $150 billion just to what? 
completely destabilize the Middle East and make Iran more and more aggressive. And this is why Secretary Pompeo immediately tweeted yesterday. Look at what Secretary Pompeo tweeted. No nation that desires a peaceful Middle East should contemplate arms sales with Iran. Why? Every weapon the regime buys will be at the disposal of its radical ideology. We are prepared to use domestic authorities to sanction individuals or entities contributing to these arms sales. Basically, America is saying to the world, as long as Donald Trump is president, America is saying to the world, you need to choose whether you want to do business with uh, a country that its GDP is uh, $450 billion, excuse me, is, uh, is economy, is a $450 billion, or with us, $20 trillion economy. Choose which one do you want? And of course, anyone that has brains will choose not to sell or buy arms from Iran and stay on the side of America. That is as long as Donald Trump is the president of the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, we know already that there are messages that are coming from the Democratic Party sent by the same John Kerry, who was the Secretary of State of Barack Hussein Obama. The same John Kerry is already telling the Iranians, wait, don't do anything crazy. We are going to win the elections and we'll give you everything you want. Don't worry. That's who we are dealing with. The enemies of the world, those who just executed the wrestling champion, those who are torturing and killing their own people, those who are paying billions to terrorist organizations all around the world, those people are waiting patiently or maybe impatiently for Joe Biden to become the president of the United States. They were already given assurances that if Biden is president, the Iran deal, America is back in the Iran deal, they're going to have, look, look what Trump did. His sanctions brought their oil export from 2 million barrels a month to 100,000 barrels a month. They lost 95% of their income. That's why they want to sell weapons right now. As long as Trump is president, Iran won't be, Iran is crippled right now. They can't do anything. The minute, the minute Joe Biden enters the White House, I, I think even before that, if he will ever win, God forbid, it's already going to be in the motion. They won't even wait until January. So I want to tell you something, guys. This is the story of the weapon embargo that has been lifted yesterday against the will of the United States, have shown the hypocrisy of the rest of the superpowers. They don't, they don't even care if Iran is breaching the deal or not. They're coming to tell the Americans, you got out of the deal, it's your problem. Excuse me. It's a problem of the whole world. Iran is not only our problem. Iran is a problem of the world. And if you're allowing Iran to now export weapons, let me tell you, folks, weapon will come to Venezuela. Yes, weapon will come to Southern America. Venezuela is already contemplating, because they don't have any relations with America anyway. They want to buy weapons. Can you imagine if those missiles reach Venezuela? Can you imagine? It will be almost as if it's the uh, um, Cuban Missile Crisis in the 1960s. Unbelievable. And the world is allowing that to happen. I want to tell you something. <laughs> you pray that Biden will not be elected. And, and it's because of what America is going to suffer eventually. So uh, if that's not enough, folks, uh, we talked about uh, the embargo. We talked about uh, all the things that are happening in Europe. Um, we talked about um, the peace deal between Israel and the Bahrainis and the UAE. Things are going well on that side. Things are not going well on the other side. And this is the time where I want to 
move to the theme of this evening, and I beg you to stay, and because this is even more important right now, what I'm about to say, than what I talked about earlier. And this is something that will really touch the core of your Christian faith. Ladies and gentlemen, you know, I, I read a lot. I know a lot of American history. I know a lot of what's going on there. I know a lot of American political history also, the Democrats and the Republicans. I've seen stuff. I also, one of the most dearest things and issues to my heart is uh, the unborn. And I, I want to tell you something. Um, Israel is not in a good place when it comes to the unborn. Israel is actually in a very bad place. In fact, uh, one of the things Israel must repent for is uh, allowing uh, allowing in so many cases abortions to be held uh, for no no real reason. Let me tell you a personal story. Our fourth baby, um, when Miriam had tests, um, um, the doctors uh, said, "Look, uh, we." We, some of the tests were not uh, really showing clear uh, results, and there is a good 33% chance that your fourth baby will be born with a Down syndrome. Um, and I'm talking about Elon Maria. He's now seven years old. Um, and the doctors, they didn't say it, but they, the way they, the way they acted and the way they behaved to Miriam and 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 when we decided, oh, so what? We're going to keep the babies, our, our son. They would give her that look throughout the rest of the pregnancy, all the tests, everything. And the same doctor that expected her to get rid of the baby is the one that was there to deliver the baby. And when he, when the baby was born perfectly, Miriam said, you see, it's a perfect baby. Not that we wouldn't keep it if it, well, it had anything, but I'm just saying we were expected to get rid of a baby that was 100% fine. I can't even imagine that. But I'm, I'm telling you that this is part of what actually is going on right now in America in the elections, and, and let me explain why. This whole thing of Black Lives Matter, of course, it's a scam. Of course, it's just a smokescreen for, for the Democratic Party to, to get more funding and to incite a whole section of people who they caused them to be marginalized. Now, watch this. Let me take you back to the early, uh, early, early years of the 20th century. And I'll take you back. To, of course, and some of you may know this. Many of you, I believe, don't know that. Um, may, you may not know that, but uh, a, a woman called Margaret Higgins Sanger was the first woman to start a movement for what we call today um, birth control movement. And she's known as the founder of Planned Parenthood. Margaret Sanger, ladies and gentlemen, and that was in 1916 that she opened her first birth control clinic in the country. And guess what? In her mind, it was black community and it was black babies that must be aborted. In fact, she was uh, not only a member of the KKK, she was one of the leaders of the female branch, the female society of the KKK. She was super racist. She, in fact, was part of the American Eugenics Society. It's a washed name for American uh, Nazi ideology, but the Nazis were not there yet, bear in mind. So they preceded the Nazis. And uh, let me show you the emblem of the eugenics. Now watch this. Look at this. Eugenics. Eugenics is the self-direction of human evolution. Self-direction of human evolution. Basically, they're saying we can direct ourselves where the human race is going to go by ways of taking care of business. And taking care of businesses 
either making sure some will never be born, some will be sterilized, some will be kicked out to some work camps. Believe it or not, look, I'm talking about in the 1920s and 30s. The Democratic Party was entertaining itself with ideology that later on the Nazis adopted. This is why when John F. Kennedy, JFK, went to Germany in the mid-1930s, he admired Adolf Hitler. He actually came back and wrote in his memoirs that Adolf Hitler is, a, is an amazing person. Make no mistake, even FDR, Roosevelt, the one who embraced all the minorities, he admired Mussolini. In fact, Mussolini read FDR's book and said, you know, this guy's one of us. But let me show you the thing that you may not see. Look at this. Look at this tree. I'm adding now this image. In fact, the image below is, look at what they said. Release the stranglehold of hereditary disease and unfitness. Look at what they do. They believe that some people are not fit to live with us. They believe that either they have hereditary diseases or they are just unfit. So what should we do? Take a look at this. Let's cut it off before it takes over the rest of the tree. In other words, we're doing humanity favor. If we get rid of them before they are even born, or once they're born, we just remove them from society. Ladies and gentlemen, this, what you're looking at right now, it's man's attempt to act as God. We determine who is born, who is not. We determine who is good for us, and who is not. We determine who deserves to live, who is not. We determine what humanity should look like. Now, isn't that interesting? Let's face it. Nature problems and human problems and every problem in this world is a direct result of the first sin in the Garden of Eden. Make no mistake. Everything was perfect when God created planet Earth. Everything was super perfect. But then sin entered the world, and then things started going wrong. So wrong that murder was already in chapter 4 of Genesis. And it goes on and on, and you see terrible things happen. Direct result of sin. So look what they are suggesting. Look, sin is not the problem, and God is not the address. We can take care of it by ways of neutralizing the problem, cutting it off, and creating the eugenics, by the way, this is, this is Nazism, the early form of Nazism. This woman, Margaret Sanger, is adored by the Democratic Party, by Hillary Clinton, by Kamala Harris, and by Joe Biden, by all of them. Believe it or not, but she did not want to see black babies born. And she started something, but later on, she, she founded the Birth Control Review Journal in 1916. Uh, uh, 1939, she opened another clinic in Harlem and launched the Negro Project. Negro Project, look, in Harlem. So what, what is it exactly? To neutralize uh, Jews? No. It's just directly to stop the birth of unwanted black babies. And ladies and gentlemen, she was part of a whole Democratic Party movement, the KKK. Make no mistake, ladies and gentlemen, she wrote um, unbelievable things that would that are now being scrubbed off the Internet. And every time you ask them about her, a former director of Planned Parenthood used to say, they will give you an answer like, well, yes, Margaret Sanger was racist, but everybody was a racist back then. You accept it because she's your hero and she has to be your hero and you cannot question Planned Parenthood. In fact, in 1997, 
Stephen Mosher of Population Research Institute. He wrote about the push to repackage Sanger in the Wall Street Journal. He wrote, they then went back and said, oh, she was just an early feminist. She was just an early supporter of family planning. No, she wasn't. Uh, now, she, no, she wasn't. Now she was a supporter of our giving tests to people. She was in favor of using those IQ tests to determine who should be sterilized and who should have children. IQ test. 1942, she started the American Birth Control League that became Planned Parenthood, ladies and gentlemen. There's over um, 1,600 branches, I think, all across the United States. And um, from 44 million abortions of babies since 1973, since Roe and Wade, um, 19 million, from 44 million, 19 million are black babies, way more than their percentage in society. A genocide of the black people done by the hero of the Democratic Party that is held as a hero even by... Yes, Hillary Clinton and Kamala Harris, ladies and gentlemen. And then they tell you reparations. Then they tell you that there is a, you know, a critical race theory, which means all white people are privileged and already born racist. You can't even prove that you're not. It's something you're born with. You're privileged or not privileged. That's how it is. Ladies and gentlemen, all men, all people, born equal uh, all people and I want to tell you something believe it or not I just watched Glenn Beck's um, program the other day I was shocked ladies and gentlemen I was shocked to find out that um, basically Joe Biden's great-great-grandfather uh, was actually a slave owner <laughs> and not only that he was a slave owner Instead of abolishing slavery in the 17, late 1700s, he actually, yes, inherited. He actually left the slaves for his successors. We have it in writing. By the way, Kamala Harris' father wrote in his own words in his memoir, Donald Har J. Harris. He wrote the following thing. He wrote, my roots go back within my lifetime to my parental grandmother, Miss Trishy nee, uh, Christina Brown, descendants of Hamilton Brown, who is on records as plantation and slave owner and founder of Brownstown. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the leaders of the Democratic Party. Now, they take the right people and they label them as wrong and take the wrong people and label them as right. Abraham Lincoln abolished slavery three days ago. They pulled his statue down. Why? He's a racist. You see, it's a demonic thing. The good become evil and the evil become good. And the black community is being used and abused by the Democratic Party, whose roots are worse than the Nazis. And let me tell you something. These are the things that are being now right now scrubbed by the social media. You can hardly find it. You need to dig very deep to find out all the controversial things that Margaret Sagner said and wrote. Calling human weeds. She's calling the Jewish people, the Hispanic people, human weeds. She, uh, uh, she admired people who were actually... They were um, um, the uh, advisors to Adolf Hitler at that time. Of course, right after World War II ended, uh, all this eugenics theory suffered a big blow. So now they don't call it eugenics. They call it Planned Parenthood. Now they call it, we're going to help you to plan your family. How? We're going to commit the biggest genocide ever. It's much bigger than the Holocaust, much bigger than anything. Look at this, guys. This is Planned Parenthood abortions by year from 1973 when Roe versus Wade was uh, approved, uh, 
in the Supreme Court, all the way to just uh, 2012, ladies and gentlemen. And you're talking about a rising number of mil altogether millions, millions. I mean, can you imagine just in 2012, 327,000. 2011, 334,000. And the vast majority are black babies. Make no mistake, the vast majority. So black lives matter? Oh, I think that they don't. Because you know, the last time I checked, life begins at conception. Look, when a woman wants to celebrate the soon birth, she's not saying, let's have a fetus shower. What are they saying? Baby shower. Why? It's a baby. <laughs> the baby has his own sex, his own blood type, his own DNA. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about now they push the um, I own my body. So that the, 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 the thing is now let's push the idea that the baby and the mother are one. So the mother has the right to do whatever she wants, even to the point of death, of excuse me, of birth. Now, can you imagine they're they're killing babies that are about to be born in a few minutes? They are actually killing babies in order to trade with their organs. That scandal was unveiled, unveiled, and um, caused great, great uh, shock to so many people. Not that I'm shocked. And anyone that has the audacity, anyone that has the, 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 even the, the thought to take instruments into a woman's womb and, and just clamp and pull organs, a leg and a hand and a head out for a living creature inside of the woman, it has to be demon possessed. It has to be satanic. It's a living creature. You know, um, you know, the Bible talks about these things. Um, you know, this is what um, Job said. Did not he who made me in the womb make them? Did not the same one fashion us in the womb? God fashions us in the womb. So telling me that separating your faith from abortion is needed. This is the heart of God. This is who God is, the giver of life. I'm thinking to myself, all the people, all the people that Margaret Sangner wanted to get rid of are the people that Jesus came and delivered. Jesus came and healed. Jesus came and gave them life. Think about Mary Magdalene. Seven demons were in her. Jesus delivered her from the demons. And she was the most amazing woman that followed him everywhere to the point that she's the only one that showed up early in the morning on Sunday when it was still dark. Nobody ever left the city walls at night. But she was so brave. She was so attached. She was there all alone. And when even the disciples after she ran back and told them that the body of Jesus is not there and they came with her. They didn't believe her. They stooped down. They saw that he's gone and they just left and she was there and she cried and she saw someone whom she, she thought is the gardener. It was Jesus. She said, Lord, if, look, if you know where my Lord is, tell me I will take him back. That same Mary Magdalene that loved Jesus so much, was dedicated to Jesus so much. She would have been killed according to the theory of the eugenics she would have been marginalized she would have been sent to some work camps she would have been completely taken away from society according to margaret sagnus this is what jesus came for look none of us is perfect we all have our own issues margaret sagner she actually she was um glorifying Specific races. In fact, uh, she said, um, to the best of my knowledge, she said, after she's talked about the human weeds, 
She said, I admire, um, uh, where is it? She said, always to me, any aroused group was a good group. That's what she said. She wrote in, in her autobiography. That's the woman that Hillary Clinton said, I admire her enormously, her courage, her tenacity, her vision. I'm really in awe of her. She's in awe of a woman that could teach the Nazis who to kill and how. Unbelievable. If you love black people, you cannot belong to any political party that makes that woman a saint, that admires that woman, that admires all of this nonsense of it is my body, I will decide. It is not your body. There is a living creature in it that may not even have your sex, certainly may not have your blood type, has its own DNA. It's not your body. It's a separated entity. And by the way, make no mistake, in the Bible, in the book of um, Numbers, you see that when a woman was cursed, she was cursed for not being able to give birth. And when she was blessed, she was blessed by being able to give birth. Giving birth was a token of blessing from God, not curse. Look what we did. They just flipped it. Now, having a baby is a curse. Killing the baby is a blessing. Isn't that amazing? Look, the Bible is very clear. Um, look what Jeremiah the prophet said. No, this is in Genesis, excuse me. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created him. This is the, these are the only two options in the woman's womb, by the way. And uh, in the image of God. And I want you also to see um, uh, this uh, that Jeremiah wrote. Before I formed you, God said to him, in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you as a prophet to the nations. God talking to Jeremiah the prophet, Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5. Look, I could, of course, take you to, um, the, uh, to Psalm, uh, Psalm 8 that says, for you have made him little lower than the angels, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. That's what God meant men to have. But of course, the verses uh, from um, Numbers are here. But I want to show you the verses from Psalm 132, uh, 139. Um, let, me, uh, let me find them. If not, I'll... You know, Psalm 139, the whole psalm, as far as I'm concerned, is a song of praise to God who fashioned us in the womb and who created us in the womb. And uh, um, let me see if there is a, another. Yeah. Behold, children are heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. Happy is the man who has his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with their enemies in the gate. Ladies and gentlemen, I could go on and on and on and on. And I want you to know that any person that calls himself a Christian, call himself a believer in God that follows a platform of a political party that is adoring and admiring a lady that calls, she, she said it's a sin to give birth to certain babies. That's what she said. It's a sin. She, the God, decides who gets to live and who not. And she, that God, she decides what's a sin and what not. It's a demon-possessed woman, definitely used by Satan, and now a whole political party in America that is calling Black Lives Matter, thereby brainwashing people to think that they're for them. They're nothing but, look, they're hating them so much that Joe Biden says, look, if you're not voting for me, you ain't black. Of course you're not, because... 
blacks are used by the Democrats just to vote for them. When I was in my uh, basement, black women were stocking the shelves. Uh, li listen, he, he doesn't even know that he, it comes out of him naturally because of who he is and because of who he admires. He went to the funeral of the leader of the KKK. He was his best friend. Don't be mistaken. Kamala Harris, by the way, is certainly not fitting the definition of a, a black woman, of an African-American woman. She does not check the boxes of anyone that ever has in his history slavery or being marginalized. She comes from a family that owns slaves. She's definitely not an African-American. But they are just trying to convince you that they are the symbol of righteousness. They're the symbol of how things should be, the compass to, to America. And all they do, they try to bring down America. They, pry, they try to bring down the whole world with them. They're used by Satan for satanic purposes. It's a satanic agenda. And I know that this video is going to upset a lot. And I know that this video is going to be also monitored and maybe censored. That's why it's a live video right now. And I want to tell you folks, for the American people among us, you go to vote, forget about Israel, forget about everything else, just think about pro-life. Think about a president that is fighting for the rights of the unborn and about those that call him nothing but fetus when they feel like getting rid of it and a baby when they feel like having it. They decide who gets to live and who gets to die. This alone should be the main issue for which you vote for a political party candidate as president of America. And everything else, by the way, if, you, if you're pro-life, it's naturally that you'll be pro-Israel and it's naturally that you'll be pro-freedom and pro-family and pro-First Amendment. Everything goes together. But when you decide that you can reinvent everything, that whatever God made and God said means nothing, then of course you're going to change everything. You're going to change what is a male and what is a female. You're going to change uh, what is a family. You're going to change what is freedom. You're going to change what is democracy. And you're going to change who gets to live and who gets to die because you replace God. That's what eugenics is all about. That's what Planned Parenthood is all about. And that's what these elections are all about. So I want to encourage all of, all of you all around the world to pray, 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 pray for November the 3rd for the American people to make the right choice. And I want everybody to know November the 3rd is not the voting day. It's the last voting day. Voting began already almost all across America how people register to vote, and you can go to vote now. You can go to vote now because November 3rd, we better have most people already voting. So by November the 3rd at night, we will know the results because what they're planning is to drag it for weeks and to have chaos in the streets. Let's not give them that. Father, I thank you that you're the giver of life. I thank you that you are also the one that exposes unrighteousness through your word. And Father, we are asked to expose all those and not to take part of those evil things. And Father, we ask that uh, you will, by your grace, cause the victory of the candidate that is pro-life. We care about the rights of the unborn. We are against the satanic genocide that is being done, not only in America, all across the world, even in Israel. We come against the plans of the devil to kill, steal, and destroy. We thank you for everything. And we bless your name, in Jesus' name. Yivarech echa Adonai v'yishmerecha, ya'er Adonai pana velecha v'yichinecha, yisa Adonai pana velecha v'yasem lecha shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance towards you and give you his peace, his shalom. The peace that surpasses all understanding can come only from the Prince of Peace, who is the Lord of Peace, who can give you peace now and forever, here and everywhere. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Thank you. Please share this with as many as you can. May they open their eyes to see the truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. God bless you. I love you. And shalom from Galilee, Israel. <laughs>